My name is Eli Kaufman. I am primarily a painter these days. I live in Providence, Rhode Island. I'm currently making all of my work out of my home studio. And in my spare time, I like to ride my bike and knit and <laughs> pet my roommate's cat. Painting has generally been the best medium to communicate larger ideas or messages. I'm really interested in like taking the subject matter that I'm working with and mythologizing it. Not necessarily condoning or commenting on the behavior of the figures in the work, but recognizing some of the moments in these scenes that feel kind of divine or kind of ethereal and bringing those to the foreground. I'm really interested in kind of magical realism and the idea that all of these things could be happening, but none of the scenes I'm painting are necessarily true or real. A lot of them are based on personal experiences or experiences of friends, but nothing is documentary. I definitely feel like I've always known that I wanted to be an artist. I grew up in Salt Lake City, Utah, which is the center of Mormonism, and it's a little bit odd growing up queer there, but I think that like wherever there's a strong culture, there's a strong counterculture. I was definitely surrounded by a lot of really creative people. There's a really strong DIY scene in Salt Lake, and all of that really affected the direction that my work has gone. I love documenting specific actions or subcultures or activities that my friends participate in, especially things that feel unique to where I'm from or where my friends are from. Generally, being from a place like Utah, people only care about landscape painting. So when I can find ways to make people where I grew up care about figure painting, that always feels like a, a worthwhile challenge and feels like a good way to bring my work to an audience that wouldn't normally engage with that kind of painting. I generally work at a life-size scale. I think it helps create a physical connection where a viewer of the painting could feel almost as if they could walk into the work. It makes me feel like I could be having this relationship with the figures on the canvas. A lot of my reference imagery is coming from screenshots. Sometimes it's phone photographs that I'm taking. So taking all of that that's so small and digital and blowing it up allows me to make it feel much more concrete and physical. I think that it has more of an impact at that size and more of a presence. When I work on a larger canvas, I get to kind of open up and use my whole body to create the work. I'm really excited about color all the time. I've been working a lot with monochrome lately, so a lot of the work is very bright in that way. Colors can convey a lot about the emotions and experiences of the figures in the paintings. As I started to work with bright colors more, I started to really appreciate how upfront and straightforward they are. I start with blue because it feels the most calming and quiet. If I need to turn up the volume, I'm gonna choose one of those other colors. I paint a lot from film stills and screenshots. Oftentimes those are from very popular TV shows like Skins or My So-Called Life. I recently did a Love Island painting. I think that the more people can relate to the work without having to be familiar with the art world, the more satisfying it is to me. I love it when I have people who are engaging with my artwork who wouldn't normally engage with painting. Reading work that's more approachable is really appealing to me, and working with media that people are already familiar with does that to a certain extent. It also brings a certain humor to the work. If it's based on photographs that I'm taking or that my friends are taking, it's definitely not the most everyday moments that I'm trying to photograph. Or if it is, it's about kind of like dramatizing that and heightening it. In the same way that reality shows do, like making everything kind of more than what it needs to be, adding a little bit of drama I think is really fun. I think it can be distracting if a familiar actor is 
really referenced in the work, so I often will make the figures look a little bit more like people I know. When you make your references a little less obvious, it forces your audience to look at the work a little bit longer or consider why it feels familiar, but not necessarily let that overshadow whatever the painting has to say for itself. In a lot of coming of age TV shows or movies, everything happens in the car, at the party, or in the bedroom, and those are the only places that it feels like matter in those shows. So I think that's originally where a lot of my settings came from. I'm really interested in the nocturne, and for a long time, most of my paintings were taking place at night. A party scene just feels like the ultimate climactic setting to depict joy or, you know, jealousy, euphoria, like all of those experiences can happen at a party. They're one of the settings where I'm making everything feel larger than life. I think most of the parties that we go to are not this exciting, but kind of like heightening that in the way that theater or film does, I think can be really fun to play with. A lot of times the paintings are happening in moments of anticipation or in moments where the fun, exciting thing has just passed. And so I think it teaches me as I'm like looking at my own work to appreciate more of those moments noticing the little moments between your roommates or your friends and like seeing how monumental those can be. I do like to make sure that the figures in my work look like people who I would walk past on the street or who I would be friends with. After working so much from coming of age imagery, I think now I'm moving into a stage where all of the people in my paintings are young adults and trying to figure out their lives. The locations that I'm setting scenes in has shifted as I've gotten older, and I would like to think that the people I'm painting will continue to age with me. You know, as I get older, they'll get older. It feels to me like these paintings are meant to be in a living space. So as much as I do find it, of course, satisfying to see my work in a gallery, the most flattering thing is to have one of my paintings in someone's living room. It just feels very cozy and very flattering that someone would want my work to be such an intimate part of their lives. Growing up in the place that I did definitely affected the kind of work that I want to make and like making fine art painting something that like doesn't have to just be for people who are already established in the art world. Pulling those specific experiences from either places that I grew up or places that aren't really talked about as much is exciting to me. As much as art school taught me to intellectualize my art and to make it more academic, it's really pretty simple and straightforward and I'm okay with having a broad, generic, kitschy message because I feel like I don't know, that's genuinely how I feel. I want to paint tender moments and I think everything is about community. I want my paintings to communicate that. You know, I think it's always about helping my audience reflect on what's really important about the people in their lives. No one painting is going to represent every person, but I think that as much as I can make the paintings welcoming to other people's interpretations, it's definitely more important to me that like the emotional weight of what that person is experiencing comes across, because that's something that more people can, I think, latch on to.